Well, hello neighbors, John, your whiskey neighbor here. Happy Mother's Day. Um, I have a brief moment uh, between extended family and, and my family here, and I thought I would share with you some thoughts on a interesting Canadian whiskey. So today we'll look at Forty Creek uh, Confederation Oak. All right, thanks for joining me after the break. Um, as I said in the intro, I wanted to take a look at something um, that has a, a, a nice story here in Canada, but also a nice story in my whiskey journey. Um, so this is from Forty Creek Whiskey, I think in Grimsby, Ontario. Um, it still has John K. Hall's name on it. Uh, John Hall started the Forty Creek Distillery and, and many people credit him with sort of the rebirth of interest in Canadian whiskey because um, he's been doing uh, a number of craft and, and interesting uh, expressions. Um, now, I think he sold it uh, a while ago, probably in 2014, so now if, if definitely a few years ago. Um, but his name is still on this and this is Confederation Oak. Uh, this one is lot 1867F, uh, bottle number, well, that doesn't really matter, 1955. It's bottled at 40%. And um, what I like about the story on Confederation Oak is um, John Hall found a grove of trees, I think 40 miles or 65 kilometers, I've read different things, but pretty close to the distillery of nice Canadian... Uh, oak trees and decided that these would be great he could purchase them and uh, and have them made into barrels and could age whiskey in them and turns out they were about 150 years old so they would have been around at the time that uh, Canada became a nation so um, that's the story then as I understand it like with Forty Creek um, double barrel and, and, and copper pot uh, it is a blended whiskey and in keeping in most Canadian tradition, although really it's been changing the last few years, uh, there's corn in here that's been aged in ex-American bourbon, barley and rye and all of them are aged separately and then they're, they're blended, often put back in the barrels they come from to sort of marry and usually it's a short marrying time, a few months. In this case, what I have read is that John Hall, um, you know, did that, you know, picked the corn that he wanted and the barley and the rye and got the blend at the taste that he wanted. Then he put it into the Canadian oak barrels. And uh, as the story goes, he gave it a try um, even a year later, and it just had picked up a lot of aromatics, like so strong that actually he thought, oh, what am I going to do with this? But he put it back in the barrels. Um, I'm sure he just tasted it a bit. He left it in the barrels. <laughs> and... Uh, and the story is that it ended up being in the Canadian barrels for three years. So that makes this whiskey a little tough to age because likely before they put it in the meringue process, it's pretty young whiskey, probably four to six years, somewhere in there, I imagine. Uh, and then put it back in front of the three. So this could be as old as an eight year whiskey, which isn't very old, I know. But for a non-age stamp um, Canadian blended whiskey, um, it's not bad. Let's get into it a little. Oh, a personal story. Personal story is a number of years ago. This has been out now for seven or eight years. Uh, and right when it first came out, it was one of the first purchases that my wife gave me. And I thought, you know, on uh, on Mother's Day, it might be nice to pull out something that kind of reminds me of my beautiful wife. On the nose. Um, I don't want to say fairly typical Canadian nose, but you're going to pick up most of the things in a blended whiskey. You've got some sweetness coming up, some vanilla from the barreling, but caramel right away from the corn. It's not from corn, but I just, uh, a higher sweetness. I find actually a fair amount of wood note coming up in the nose too. The rye must be in smaller portion. 
So when I'm, there we go. It's tough, but it, there we go. A little bit of, of floral note and a little bit of spice, baking spices. And there it keeps developing. It's a pretty gentle whiskey as far as whiskeys go. It's 40% and that's what you catch on the nose. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't overwhelm. It's gently sweet. Spices there if you stick with it. The wood will come up pretty soon. The sweetness is so sweet it almost is like a butterscotch. Yeah. Not a burnt dark toffee, but a light toffee, a light Werther's. Ah, sounds of a nice backyard, eh? Cheers, I'm going to give it a taste. First impression again is that sweetness. Um, yeah. Definitely. First thing, butterscotch, Werther candy. Um, like almost a bourbon level sweetness. Just really quite sweet. But it's backed. Now the rye is making itself known. Now I'm getting clove and allspice and a little bit of pepper creeps up on the edge of your tongue. Hmm. You know, time has been this bottle's friend. And I like this better than some bottles I've had. Not uncommon if you dig around on reviews or you watch some people who uh, appreciate Canadian whiskey, as I do. You guys know I'm Canadian. Um, to say there's quite a bit of bottle variation on this. And I, and I will say I have uh, bought bottles of this that have really not um, shined. That actually there's a bit of an alcohol bloom or a, um, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, just, just a, not the flavors blended well. This bottle actually is quite good. Um, and um, it's also been, this one's been open for a little while. Um, maybe I'm reading too much into that. Maybe I'll just say this particular bottle or this batch, uh, 1867F, um, seems to be balanced quite well. I can even get a little bit of dark fruit, a little bit of that, um, uh, no plum, maybe that's too rich. Uh, dark red grape, maybe, or a red, really, really red, ripe Bing cherry, um, that kind of thing. Um, and some cinnamon in there. And through it all, a fair amount of wood. It actually, this one kind of reminds me uh, of a bourbon, uh, this particular bottling of it. A little more rye spice. Mm, that's quite Canadian. It's pretty sweet. If you don't like sweet whiskey, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and I, it's hard for me to recommend it because I have had a bottle of it that wasn't very good. Had a great story and great connection, but wasn't very good. This one's good, um, or has become good. I can't recall. It's been like I, I think it's been open almost half a year. So, if I were to score Confederation Oak um, uh, with all the caveats I just said, I've heard of quite a bit of batch variation um, and whatnot. This in front of me here could be my mood, almost hints of bacon. Uh, there's a bit of a smoke in there. Anyways, uh, this bottle's quite good. This bottle would be a four star whiskey. Um, and I'd stand by it. It's a great story. Great story. If you like Canadian whiskey, I would say, um, it'd be worth picking, picking up a bottle. Yeah. Uh, as I said, the previous one that I had was like significantly less, no more than, than a three star. Like in my rating, I know what's my rating, but it was, it was quite a bit less. In fact, the last one, uh, what's their copper, their copper pot, which is 
like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, uh, I would say it would be even better than the last one I had. But this, this is a bit more layered. This has a little more subtlety to it. Um, and you know, you could sip, you could sip it and catch a lot of flavor. So thanks for joining me on this Mother's Day uh, Sunday. Um, my thoughts today is that this expression is good. It'd be worth picking up and be nice to have on your shelf. And it's certainly got a good story, which is often half of the fun when you're sharing whiskey with friends. So thanks again, John, your whiskey neighbor. If you haven't yet subscribed, I'd sure love to see you join the community. Uh, and if you like the video, give her a thumbs up uh, and certainly give some comments below. Maybe your experience with Forty Creek or John Hall or just anything interesting. It's always fun to read some cool comments. You guys have a good day. Thank you.